active earthquake zone. Now, when you think about earthquakes, you're probably thinking about earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault. Just a few months ago, scientists announced the San Andreas Fault is due for another major earthquake, specifically in Southern California, where there hasn't been a major quake since 1857. What will really happen when San Andreas unleashes a big earthquake? On your screen is a map of California. You can see the San Andreas Fault running north from the Salton Sea in the south for around 800 miles through the state's coastal and inland regions. Americans and Californians alike live in constant fear of the devastating earthquakes and the fault's potential to split the state in two. It is constantly under surveillance, but new findings suggest something even more devastating could be on the horizon. The question that needs to be answered is, when exactly will the San Andreas Fault eventually give way? Would this result in California sliding into the Pacific Ocean? Let's break it down. To most people, the very mention of the San Andreas Fault brings to mind images of devastating earthquakes, and not just in California. It's a large crack in the Earth's surface that can be found in the far western section of North America. The fault is over 800 miles long, beginning near the northern end of the Gulf of California and ending somewhere near San Francisco on the Pacific Ocean. The continual tectonic activity identified around its base is what makes this fault so dangerous, as it frequently causes earthquakes along its route. The horrific example of the earthquake that devastated America in 1906 is still fresh in people's minds. A weaker earthquake hit the Los Angeles suburbs in 1989, but a more severe and destructive quake along a larger secondary fault of the San Andreas occurred five years later. Despite the destruction, the fault line itself did not pass directly through any of the cities. Yet, there are a number of towns that are perilously close to the fault line and could suffer greatly in the event of an earthquake. A lot of places in California are easy targets, including Point Reyes Station, Fraser Park, Daly City, Desert Hot Springs, Gorman, San Bernardino, Wrightwood, Palmdale, and Bodega Bay. Thomas Jordan, director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, issued a public statement recently detailing the precarious condition of the San Andreas Fault, which has turned the thoughts of all Californians and caused widespread anxiety. Thomas claims that a major earthquake may be imminent because the fault line is in a dangerous state. Fear of what the fault line could unleash at any time is something Californians have to live with, and this fresh warning has just made things worse. As Thomas put it, it looks like it's locked, loaded, and ready to go, along the segment of the fault line in Southern California. In 1857, a magnitude 7.9 earthquake ripped a stunning 185 miles between Monterey County and the San Gabriel Mountains near Los Angeles. The last time this region experienced such a calamity, the San Andreas system springs have been twisted very tightly from sitting idle for too long. As a result of the news that was released at the National Earthquake Conference in Long Beach, people everywhere are on high alert and wondering when and how severe the next earthquake will be. In all fairness, Californians have a legitimate reason to be concerned about the San Andreas Fault. The Pacific Plate is progressively drifting to the northwest in relation to the North American Plate, making this a key tectonic border. Unfortunately, the stress has been building up for almost a century, and this movement only relieves around 16 feet of accumulated plate movement per 100 years. A huge earthquake may be on the horizon, and Thomas Jordan recently sounded the warning that the fault appears to be in a dangerous state. Nevertheless, this isn't the only due to erupt segment of the San Andreas Fault. There hasn't been much change in San Bernardino County, which is southeast of the Cajon Pass. In the meantime, the time period between 1680 and 1690 has been peaceful in the southeast, close to the Salton Sea. Further complicating matters, research into the motion of tectonic plates has revealed that the Pacific Plate is currently moving in a northwesterly direction relative to the North American Plate. Jordan suggests that the government of California prioritize planning for a devastating earthquake of magnitude 8. It is through studying the 1857 earthquake, also called the Fort Tijan quake, that we gain an appreciation of the potential for cataclysmic destruction that the San Andreas Fault possesses. Although it began in Monterey County and moved south past Fort Tijan and the Cajon Pass in San Bernardino County, this earthquake was so strong that it was given its own name. 
Trees were uprooted and earth was liquefied as far away as Stockton because of the tremors, which lasted anywhere from one to three minutes. While the San Andreas Fault does indeed enter Los Angeles, in some 30 miles outside of the city proper, the city is still in danger despite its safe distance from the conflict zone. Due to its location so close to the San Andreas Fault system, the city is likely to be severely shaken by any major earthquakes that occur there. Thomas Jordan and his colleagues replicated a 7.8 magnitude earthquake on the fault to show the public what kind of destruction could occur. The Salton Sea is the starting point for the simulation and then advances westward into the San Gabriel Mountains, illustrating the potential impact of seismic waves on the Los Angeles area. Furthermore, another computer-generated film depicts widespread ground shaking from northern San Diego County to Barstow. The Southern California Earthquake Center ran a supercomputer simulation in 2010 to imagine the effects of a magnitude 8 earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. We aim to make the simulation as realistic as possible, including all the force of the real earthquake in 1857. Beginning in Monterey County, it spread southward to the Mexican border, with the LA Basin and San Fernando Valley bearing the brunt of the shaking because of the soft soils there. The expansion of this sphere of influence as shown by the shaking is massive, as Jordan puts it. Sedimentary basins such as the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles Basin, and San Bernardino are excited by the directivity pulse as energy is pushed down the fault. The Los Angeles area would continue to shake for extended periods. What sort of fault would the San Andreas Fault be if the simulation were to actually take place? The Northern Pacific Plate to the south and west and the North American Plate to the north and east are separated by the San Andreas Fault as proposed by the theory of plate tectonics. The San Andreas Fault is a strike-slip fault because the Northern Pacific Plate is sliding laterally past the North American Plate as it moves north. Although the relative movement of the plates has been roughly one centimeter per year over geologic time, the yearly activity rate has been four to six centimeters per year since the early 20th century. As long as this level of activity persists, the next major event is just around the corner. Certain parts of the San Andreas Fault shifted by as much as 6.4 meters during the deadly 1906 earthquake, earning the fault a reputation as a major contributor to such catastrophes. Nonetheless, there are still others who use the term transform fault when referring to the San Andreas, which might be confusing. Picture two slices of pizza, one topped with pepperoni and the other with anchovies, sitting side by side on a table. Bits of pepperoni fall off when you move one pizza over the anchovy pizza. Because of this, the geology and landforms along the enormous rift are immensely complicated and unpredictable. Although the shifting of the Earth's crust poses a serious threat, it occurs at a relatively gradual rate of about a few inches each year, about the same as the growth of your fingernails. Unfortunately, this movement is not constant. The plates occasionally become trapped, pressing against each other but not moving. When this occurs, yearly movement may slow to a few inches at most. Nevertheless, when the stress becomes too great and the rock along the fault cracks, the plates can abruptly shift several feet, causing the waves that we feel as earthquakes to travel in all directions. There's more going on with the San Andreas Fault than meets the eye. Indeed, pieces of it can be spotted all over the state of California. The Carrizo Plain in San Luis Obispo County is where you can receive your first view of this massive fault. The fault's characteristic scarps and pressure ridges can be seen in Marin County as well. Some sections of the fault are obscured by vegetation and alluvium, while others haven't moved in decades. Roads in major cities like Los Angeles and San Bernardino pass through massive mountains of gouge, or rock that has been pulverized to a powder by the shifting plates. Although the San Andreas Fault is a real place, it's also a geologic marvel that has been developing over the course of more than 30 million years. The movement and collision of the plates has pushed rocks from widely separated places together, resulting in a wide variety of rock types on either side of the fault. As an illustration, the Selenian block of granite in Northern California's center region actually came from Southern California, and the Ninoc volcanoes in Los Angeles County are the southern half of the volcanic complex that begins 200 miles to the southeast in Monterey County. Even if the location of the San Andreas Fault is disputed, and some people insist it's in North Mexico. There's no denying that this geological wonder exists and that it's a tribute to the awesome force of tectonic activity and the astounding diversity of the natural world. 
Throughout the years, numerous myths and tales have circulated about the San Andreas Fault, some of which are not factual. Despite the fact that the fault can produce sizable tremors, the assumption that it can trigger mega quakes of magnitude 10 or more is completely unfounded. The earthquakes that occur along the San Andreas Fault are widely recognized as some of the deadliest ever recorded. The big question, though, is whether the next one will be as powerful as the one in 1857 at Fort Tijon or the one in 1906 in San Francisco. The devastating San Francisco earthquake, which leveled structures and claimed the lives of hundreds, will forever be remembered in the annals of California history. The Great Fort Tijon earthquake, however, was so powerful that it was felt throughout all of Southern California. Curiously, the earthquake's epicenter was not at Fort Tijon, rather in Parkfield, Monterey County. More than 360 kilometers of the San Andreas Fault were ruptured as the earthquake erupted to the northwest of Parkfield and spread southeastward. More damage was done to Fort Tijon, which was barely halfway down the breach, than to other less inhabited places in Southern California. The 1857 earthquake in Fort Tijon was larger than the 1872 earthquake in Owens Valley and was comparable in size too, if not larger than the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco. Scientists may not be able to predict when the next earthquake will occur, but they're still studying the fault in order to learn more about its patterns of behavior and be better prepared for the next time it unleashes its force. The proximity of Fort Tijon to the fault during the 1857 earthquake, which was perhaps as strong as a magnitude 8, increased its destructive potential. Both the 1857 and 1906 earthquakes lasted up to two minutes, the 1906 earthquake was responsible for damage throughout a 400-kilometer stretch of the northern part of the fault. Surprisingly, cities like Los Angeles, San Bernardino, and Santa Barbara that were located far from the fault line suffered little to no damage during the 1857 earthquake. Since the response of modern high-rises to long-period ground motion encountered during earthquakes is poorly understood, they may be more susceptible to damage than low buildings. Nonetheless, due to its proximity to the fault, Fort Tijon was hit by aftershocks months and even years after the initial quake. Experts believe that the 1857 earthquake would have been just as strong in other inhabited locations, such as Wrightwood, Palmdale, Fraser Park, or Taft. There's no doubt that another major earthquake will occur. The only question is whether or not it will be as devastating as the 1857 disaster. Earthquakes can happen at any time, so people in Southern California need to be on the lookout and ready for whatever may come. It's unknown how well the current structures will stand up in another major quake, despite the fact that Los Angeles was not impacted as severely during the last earthquake. Los Angeles, San Bernardino, and Santa Barbara are more at risk from local faults such as blind thrust faults since they're closer to these cities and are less well understood than the San Andreas Fault. Yet, the San Andreas continues to pose the greatest risk to communities like Fort Tijon and Palmdale that are situated close to the fault. While earthquakes are the most well-known hazard connected to the San Andreas Fault, major flooding is also a possibility. Rivers and streams may become dammed up as a result of the fault's rupture, leading to flooding in the area. Furthermore, earthquakes can trigger landslides, which can block rivers and lead to flooding. Strong tremors along the San Andreas Fault have been known to trigger extensive flooding in the areas nearby. In the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, for instance, water mains broke and levees were breached, leading to severe flooding. Although the San Andreas Fault is most commonly associated with earthquakes, it's also a potential flood zone. The seismic risk in Southern California can only be understood and mitigated with ongoing observation and study. While it is impossible to completely eliminate the risk of earthquakes, it is possible to lessen the damage they do by being well prepared. Even yet, residents and visitors to the Golden State would do well to take precautions and keep up with the latest security measures. There's no doubt that the San Andreas Fault is both a marvel and a mystery. Whether you're taking the kids on a road trip down its length or visiting one of the many state and national parks that dot its length, the San Andreas Fault might cause the predicted amount of damage, according to the Southern California Earthquake Center. Nonetheless, the real harm may be more or less severe than anticipated. It's also not known if the fault will stay quiet forever, or if and when a major earthquake will occur. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about a possible earthquake at the San Andreas Fault? 
share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. Next one.